Yes, I'm all over that. Paul Skeens, he has been a moneymaker for us. Pirates first five money line, minus 140. It's jacked up a little bit compared to the full game price, which I understand. But the guy has been virtually untouchable. I mean, 3-0, and an ERA of 3. Not untouchable, but, man, he has been very, very difficult to figure out. And the Cardinals have not seen him yet. And then on the flip side, Miles Michaelis has been brutal at home this season. 0-2 over five starts, an ERA of 5.81. Also, the Pirates have won four of the last five games that Skeens has started. So let's go Pirates first five money line. First five under four for even money between the Astros and the Giants. First of all, this game is in San Francisco, very much a pitcher-friendly park. And you've got Jordan Hicks going today as the starting pitcher, whose ERA is a full point lower when pitching at home. If you look at him, he's been pretty dependable this season, an ERA south of three, and also allowed three runs or fewer, or excuse me, two runs or fewer, and every single start but one. Then you look at the Astros, the disastros it feels like this season. With Ronald Blanco on the mound, they have hit the under in three straight games. He also, with a, a good ERA in this one, two, seven, eight uh, here. If you get a four, I think this is the play. The full game under is seven and a half. Plus, we saw this yesterday, a very low scoring affair between both of these teams. So let's go first five under four for even money between the Astros and the Giants. I am headed to St. Louis. Pirates, first five, money line. Minus 150, taking on those cards. Paul Skeens on the mound for the Pirates. Here's my handicap for this game. He goes about eight foot five, 475 pounds. His mustache feels like spun silk. He's got 16-pack abs. The Pirates have won four of his five starts this season. And who are, who are... The Cardinals starting tonight. Miles Michaelis, are you serious? Brutal at home this season. 0-2 over five starts with an ERA of 5.81. With a nod to Paul Skeens fan club president, Chris Mack. Pirates, first five money line, minus 150. Ooh, I will be on that as well. And we did some online shopping, and we found the best price available. Look at us. All right, time now to bring in the third member of our Best Bets crew, the Magic 8-Ball. Let us gaze upon the glorious Magic 8-Ball. Shall it fade or tail these noble betters? <laughs> All right, 8-Ball, what say you about today's bets? I'm going for five under four between the Astros and the Giants. Do we like it? 8-Ball says, come on, don't count on it. Great. Thanks, 8-Ball. How about the Pirates on the first five money line against the Cardinals today? Jenks and I both like it, so let's hope that the eight ball does too. My reply is no. Thanks. Well, what are you going to do? i tell you what you can do. You want to check out the eight ball? You want to check out Chelsea Shake, the eight ball, spin the wheel, whatever contraption she's got over there, depending on the day, you can do it. Twitch.tv slash BetQL. What else is on the card? Ooh, I'm looking at your card, and I might pick one off. I don't know. Uh, I'll also be on the Pirates' first five money line. You got to back Paul Skeens until the trend is done. He's 3-0 and this season, and not only are his numbers good, it feels like there's an electricity to the entire team when he takes them out. You can feel it in the city. You can feel it with the announcers. So I think that's a solid play as well, especially against the lowly Cardinals and Miles Mikolas, who has not had good numbers this, so far this season. I'm seeing one more on your card that I might be plucking, but I don't know. Uh, I've waited this long, so maybe not. Jenks, what are your other plays? Well, for this play, Chelsea, been a while. It's time to talk to Run Line Jenkins. Run Line Jenkins is back. <laughs> oh, Lord. Mm, gotta strap my bones so you can see via the picture. Sometimes being on the bayou keep your muscles big. Now, you ain't having me for a while, but I've been down there eating some crawfish. Spending some time with a lady friend. But just like my five ex-wives, I let her go because she wouldn't stop getting on my nerves. Run line this. Run line that. She said, run line. How many kids do you have? And I said, baby, 
I got more kids than the White Sox got losses. You eat your Creole, you keep your family tree alive, you know what I'm saying? Now I was eating some gumbo last night and I came up with this play on the run line. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to fade the White Sox again. Brian Wu is on the mound in Seattle. He has been masterful. 3-0, and a 1.07 ERA. Even better at home. Over three starts, 1-0, and a .57 ERA. Now he faces this White Sox team. Their spirit has to be crushed after last night. They give up a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth from the big dumper. White Sox have lost 16 of 18. Chicago is starting a rookie that has been called up from double-A. Great in double-A, but that is much different than the majors as we know, even if he pitches well. Have you heard of the White Sox bullpen? Seattle, run line, minus 103 is the play. That there is going to be a player who has more sway over what this organization does, more so than any other player in the NBA. So I don't know if that was a factor or not, but it's certainly something I would think about. I also think in general that Dan Hurley wouldn't have had as much control over his program as he does at UConn. I feel like whatever he says probably goes uh, at UConn because he has the track record of success. But even like, even if you take LeBron out of the equation, I would imagine he would still have to run a lot of his decision-making in front of the brass for the Lakers. Like, it would be front office decisions because it's a professional sports team. If they drafted somebody in the first round, they're probably going to give him the gentle nudge, hey, you need to make a place for this guy. But as somebody who truly loves the game of basketball and somebody who is an X's and O's guy, he can sit at UConn. He can run up his plays. He can tinker with the offense. He can do whatever he wants without any type of blowback. So even though he wouldn't be making as much money at UConn, obviously, yeah, um, control means something, especially to somebody who means who who uh, who loves basketball as much as Dan Hurley does. Mm -hmm. Now, two years ago, he signed a six-year, thirty-two point one million dollar deal with the Huskies, and I don't want to be that guy, but also. You would say, well, oh my God, how could you turn down this much money? It's double the money. But you know what? If you're not ridiculous with your money, at some point, happiness goes a lot further than how much is in your bank account. He's going to be well compensated for the rest of his life. And I do say, if you're if you're making a case for Dan Hurley staying, there is something to be said for doing the best at what you do where you are. You don't necessarily have to go to the NBA or go elsewhere to prove anything to anyone. You win two national championships in college basketball, you're pretty much a surefire Hall of Famer. And one thing about Dan Hurley that I really appreciate is that he is, he is for all you can say about his personality and how crazy he gets and how outspoken he is, we saw that in his press conference where he's like, we're the best program in the country by far. He has the basketball acumen to pass it up. It's not just recruiting, it's player development, it's his offense and how that has evolved over time. So he is set now to I don't know if we're in an age where you can make a dominant run in college basketball any longer because of the portal and because of NIL. But if any program and if any coach has the ability to do that right now, it's probably Hurley and the Huskies. Well, also, don't you think this says a lot about his confidence in the program and the current players that he has? Because mm-hmm. if he had no faith in the current roster and the guys coming back, I think he would have left for L.A. in a minute saying, well, this team's not going to win. I don't really have a chance at a three-peat, so why would I stay here? So this makes me think that he has a ton of confidence in his team. So I don't know if that goes into the betting market because obviously UConn uh, is your overwhelming favorite. Or I guess they're... They're uh, tied for the best odds. Uh, UConn ten to one to win the national title next year, but like you said, it's very hard to repeat a title, let alone three repeat. But I did see where Alex Caravan, I believe, is coming back for UConn again. I think he has some confidence in his team. If you're the Lakers, is this embarrassing for the Lakers, or is it just the best college coach in the game turning them down? You're the L.A. Lakers. You got LeBron James on your roster. You got Anthony Davis on your roster. You just offered Dan Hurley $70 million over six years. You gave him the spiel. 
were the L.A. Lakers. Come on out west. And Dan Hurley said, no, I'm not going to do it. Mike Krzyzewski turned them down, what, 20 years ago. Lakers have tried this before, and Krzyzewski stayed at Duke, probably the right call. Is this embarrassing for the Lakers, or is it just business as usual? This is part of the game. I think maybe if they had offered him more money, it would have been more embarrassing. But I don't know. I don't want to say they lowballed him, but you're the L.A. Lakers. Like, you have the money to shell out the big bucks. If you really wanted him, I think you should have put a, a better offer on the table. It is a little embarrassing because, obviously, you are going down a rank in the college uh, ranks of things, and you would hope that this is the job that everybody would drop everything for. But I don't know. 